Well, good morning, YouTube. It's been a while since I've done a uh, in-truck vlog. And um, Friday and then yesterday, I came home with a pounding headache. My head was killing me. And usually I tend to eat less than I should and drink less water than I should during the hot days of the summer. And it's not uncommon on a hot day for me to come home feeling like crap. And usually feeling like crap comes along with the headache. But Friday wasn't terribly hot and Tuesday wasn't terribly hot. Tuesday being September 2nd, but when I came home, or when I was driving around yesterday, I kept hearing this hissing noise coming from the back of my van, and I would go around to the back, and I couldn't figure out where the hissing was coming from, but when I got to my last call last night, I finally went back to the back of the truck and was able to find out where that hissing was coming from and it was coming from my 410A recovery tank Turn right on North Main Street. evidently it's too full and too hot and so the relief valve was blowing off and I would say that my headache was related to the fact that my van was uh, filling up Drive with refrigerant gas. Miles. Then turn right on Highway 210. Obviously, that's not a good thing, um, and that's one drawback to having a small work van. If uh, if you're not careful, and you end up. Overfilling a tank or the tank gets too hot in the truck You can really put yourself in danger of serious harmful effects so I'm gonna have that tank changed out get a fresh one and Be more careful in the future I didn't uh, you know, didn't push myself too far into the feeling like crap. Once I found that I had that leakage on the tank, I rolled the windows down on the truck to keep some ventilation in here and uh, try to keep me from feeling like crap. But that's a little word to the wise. I don't particularly care for an open bed pickup to work out of, but if you had your refrigerant rack, your tank rack, in the back of an open bed pickup, obviously you would not have the potential danger of refrigerant gas leaking into the van. And uh, I like the way that uh, Zach and Ralph and John Israel run their trucks with the service bodies, with the boxes, and uh, have their tools separate from the cab and their tanks and whatnot. But I've got a exciting weekend coming up, September 6th. I have a... Uh, a friend coming to visit and I'm really looking forward to that I'm not going to spill the beans on exactly what it is yet but we will definitely be shooting some video maybe do some HVAC stuff on my system at my house and we're also hoping to do something related not to HVAC and uh, fully expect to shoot video on that as well. Turn right on Highway 210. So, a little preview 
of uh, my weekend coming up just to let you know to check back in uh, Sunday or Monday or whenever I get around to editing that video for the weekend. But this summer has been one of the strangest summers that I've ever seen in North Carolina. And from what I have gathered, the rest of you guys have had generally warm summers, but some of you have been slower than usual. Um, we have almost wanted to start doing heating tune-ups because of the lack of inclement heat and people not wanting to bother with maintenance because it's too mild. They don't see the need for it. And uh, Cape Fear in the past did not focus on maintenance agreements. They, I know that some of the guys that work with me and whatnot are gonna watch this, but the old regime wasn't necessarily lax, but they certainly did not see the benefit of offering maintenance to customers, both to the customer and to the business. And that really put a difficult step in front of us now that we are focusing on maintenance because our, the majority of our customers had never been told that maintenance was important and necessary and so they didn't it, it, it's been difficult to convince them to allow us to do maintenance but we've grown our maintenance base hugely over the year 2013 and 2014 as uh, new management has come in with a focus to maintenance and um, I, we had something like a mediocre 250 or 300 maintenance agreements um, and even a small multi-tech company three or four technicians um, won't stay busy all year with only 300 maintenance agreements the way that Ralph runs his business, being a one-man show, makes it difficult to offer maintenance agreements to the level where you could stay busy year-round with maintenance, simply for the fact that if you're busy doing maintenance and you have service emergency visits necessary, you have to put off your maintenance agreements until your service is slowed down. But for a multi-employee, multi-technician company, you need maintenance agreements because it's not always busy enough to keep everybody working, doing strictly service. We have a four crew install department and we have currently six service technicians that run maintenance and service both residential and light commercial. And uh, six guys need quite a few maintenances if you're expecting to be um, profitable the majority of the year. But um, I'm headed to a service call this morning and uh, the description was that need to diagnose any and all problems with unit and then contact the management company to authorize repairs. Since I'm shooting this vlog, I may as well throw that in there to uh, sweeten the deal a little bit, give you something other than my face to look at through this video. But. Uh, We'll see what we get when we get there, and hope it's worth shooting video on. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll be back in a little bit. 
Hope y'all enjoyed it.